What's going on guys? Alex here with TFL Off-Road and I'm here in Sand Hollow State Park in Hurricane, Utah with the brand new 2021 Yamaha R-Max 2 1000 and R-Max 4 1000, the two-seater and the four-seater. These are Yamaha's new utility and sport side-by-sides. The whole idea is you can work and play in them in a 1000cc class machine. So without further ado, let's get right into the full review. enough power for this kind of terrain you know this isn't high-speed desert running I'm kind of rock crawling then it opens up a little bit into some sandy areas I never feel like I'm running out of power and there's just more there I I have plenty of room to plant my foot and go way faster which we'll be testing out in a little bit so the biggest news is the motor and you can kind of see it peeking here under the uh, utility dump bed. There's the top end of the motor, so super easy to get to your spark plugs. Um, but that is a 999cc parallel twin from Yamaha. Makes 108 horsepower. 1000cc class motor inside of a 64 inch machine that has a cargo bed on the back of it. Super cool combination and it should make for some awesome fun out on the trails. Alright guys, so we've got kind of a trickier obstacle up here pretty steep there's a lot of weird ledges it's a little off axis kind of tilted to the right we're watching this guy in the four-seater struggle a little bit to get up there uh, but let's see what I can do I'm in uh, in high I'm in four-wheel drive haven't locked the diff yet but I might have to here so we're kind of over that first section I'm gonna swing a little right here and then at the last second try and turn up to the right Nice, didn't even have to lock it. And I'll go to low now to kind of get me around this last turn here. One more reverse maneuver. And there we go, didn't have to lock the diff. Look at that paraglider, that's really cool. There's one more ledge right here. Gonna go to low for that. And let's lock the diff. And there you can see diff is locked right there. And we're going to have to bump it a little. There we go. So with the diff locked and in low, got over the obstacle. No issues whatsoever. So this is kind of the new generation of the Wolverine X2 and X4, and they actually made it way easier to get in. The Wolverine door on the old model kind of went to about here. This was all solid plastic right here. Now this is a much wider opening. You can step in and it's super easy. Inside of the vehicle, they really focus on making this as comfortable as possible for the driver. So you have a nice thick steering wheel with places to put your hands. Down here by my knees, I have these soft touch uh, padded materials, which my knees actually line up perfectly with. I thought these were gimmicky when Yamaha briefed me on these, uh, but after spending a whole day riding through Utah with them, these are actually a must. I really like these. They're super functional and well thought out. You also have this shoulder bolster right here. Personally, I'm a little too skinny to make full use of this, um, but when you get off on some of these, you know, super articulated sections or where you're kind of leaning to one side of the trail, this can really help hold you in there, which is really nice. Up front, you have your control for two wheel drive, four wheel drive, and diff lock. Uh, this has a permanent rear diff lock, uh, but the front is selectable. You'll actually get a light on the dash when the diff lock is engaged, but that's really cool. You're not relying on, you know, wheel slippage or anything to get it to lock up. It's fully selectable, which I really like. Now on the standard and XTR models, you're gonna get these Fox QS3 shocks, which have a three position clicker on them. You have soft, medium, and firm. Uh, you have to do that on all four corners, but it's a pretty easy adjustment. All right, we just got through that first section. It was pretty rock crawly, uh, but now it's starting to open up a little bit more we can go a little faster. So I've been in the uh, XTR with the uh, QS3 shocks, so they are manually adjustable. We're gonna go from position one, which is the softest setting, to position three. And it's super easy, just a three position clicker right there. You don't need to do any counting, um, just three settings and you know where you're at. So, so far guys, I've been kind of leaving the D mode in trail. And the reason I've been doing that is because the standard model uh, doesn't come with the D mode uh, installed. You can add it on if you want to, 
uh, but the standard model without the switch is always in trail mode. So I wanted to try that out a little bit. And honestly, it works well. It works well high speed, it works well crawling, and it works well just kind of picking through the trails. Um, but now I'm gonna actually start testing out the D mode. So we're gonna start running a little high speed. I'll go into sport mode. So now that it's opening up a little bit more, I'm in sport mode, and you can totally tell that the, uh, the throttle is way snappier in sport mode. Way more aggressive, you don't need to push down nearly as hard to get the same amount of power. Much snappier response, and way less engine braking too. I still have good control over the accelerator. I can still slow down a good amount to uh, get over some rocks or cross a little ledge if I need to. Just like here, cresting up over the hill, you let off, you got plenty of control, but then mash down and oh my God, you've got power. And as far as the suspension goes, we just put this into its stiffest setting on the, uh, the QS3 shocks, the manually adjustable ones. And it's really comfortable. I don't feel like I'm getting tossed around, but I'm not, you know, bouncing around all over the place. I'm not, you know, it's not too soft. I'm gonna hop in the four-seater and just show you the leg room. The seats are not adjustable back and forth, forward and backwards that is, and this passenger seat is not either. So this is kind of, the predefined seating position. Um, you don't have those soft knee pads in the back for the passenger, which is kind of a bummer, but you do get this nice rubber grab handle right here. So still have something to kind of push you back into the seat with. Four cup holders back here. Uh, seat belts kind of store away in this little bin back here. Um, so if you are carrying cargo, they tuck away real nice. In case if you step back a little bit, you can actually see how short this machine is for being a four seater. If you look at the profile of it, I'm kind of sitting above this rear wheel whereas on some of the competition four-seaters the rear wheels way out there behind you uh, so this is very usable and very maneuverable out on the trail on both the two-seater and the four-seater you have a 600 pound hauling capacity and a 2,000 pound towing capacity you can see the uh, receiver is already built in there so you don't need to add anything on we have just one handle to drop the tailgate just like a pickup truck uh, good little surface if you need to throw some tools and do maybe a little bit of work here if you needed to if you want to convert it you just kind of fold the uh, bottom portion of the seat up, pull up on this latch, kind of pivot the seat forward, and the whole thing will slide and latch into place forward. And then you have a much more usable space for cargo. Um, there are some drawbacks to doing it this way. Polaris gives you more of a usable cargo area in their competitive vehicles, uh, but the seats aren't as comfortable. Whereas in this, you give up some of the cargo space. Uh, the seats you can't take out. I mean, you could if you really wanted to. You could unbolt them, but they're not meant to be taken out. Um, but they're still super comfortable. Let's go check out the cargo in the two-seater. The two-seater actually has a cargo bed because there's no seats. So um, right now there's a spare tire mounted in the back. This is a hydraulic assist dump bed. So it's really easy to lift up even with that big beefy off-road tire in the back um, Just put it back down latches into place There's a latch on both sides So you don't need to run around the vehicle to do it and if you look in the bed these tie down points are actually welded to the frame uh, So they're super strong You can use some big beefy ratchet straps to tie things down and not worrying about morphing the plastic bed All right, so I'm gonna flip it into crawl mode here as I'm coming up to the steep ledge. And wow, that makes the throttle way less responsive, which is awesome, exactly what you need. I should back down and be in low here. But yeah, throttle's way less sensitive now. You have much greater control over it. And yeah, you can just pick your way up. Lots of fine-tuned control with the crawl mode. I really like it. Good sight lines out the side. I can see both front and rear tires popping up over that ledge. And that's where the uh, the short that's where the short wheelbase really comes into play. Normally you'd really be uh, bottoming out there and really testing out your brake over. But with this, it's a four-seater, it's a little bit shorter. 
just gotta bump it and yeah it's got a, a big beefy skid plate underneath so uh, stuff like that isn't uh, isn't too bad for it I don't really feel bad about doing that and uh, yeah you don't you don't end up taking too much damage um, because it's got such a short wheelbase Now on the standard and XTR models, you're gonna get these Fox QS3 shocks, which have a three position clicker on them. You have soft, medium, and firm. Uh, you have to do that on all four corners, but it's a pretty easy adjustment. And on the highest end LE model, you get the Fox IQS or intelligent quick shift shocks. Um, these, you don't have to run around all four corners to change. There's just a rocker switch, three positions in the dash of the vehicle. You can do it on the fly. It changes really fast. Uh, to be honest, I didn't notice a huge difference between all three modes. I'm sure people love playing around with that kind of stuff. Personally, if it were me, I'd probably go for the clickers and just leave them in one position. It's just not that much of a difference um, to get out and run around to all four corners, but the suspension is really impressive no matter what setting you're in. Soaks up every bump, uh, doesn't really toss you around too bad, and I just have a lot of confidence driving with this Fox suspension. All right, we just got back onto some dune section. I'm in trail mode. To sport, you can change on the fly, and uh, yeah, you have a lot of power in sport mode. I love how sharp the throttle response is. You just tap it ever so slightly, and it just takes off. And these uh, Maxxis Carnivore tires are really good in this sand. Probably not the tire I'd want in the woods in Colorado, but in the sand, they're great. And I love the sound of this machine too. It's plenty loud, lets you know you've got some power. And this is where that extra power really comes in. Sure, the old Wolverine X2 and X4, it could go on the trails. It could climb a little bit of rocks, but this is where that extra power is awesome, is out in the sand, full throttle, chasing some other people down. This is where you want that 999 cc parallel twin. Yamaha is really proud of their CVT. They always have tension on the belt in their Ultramatic CVT, so you're never getting, you know, that feeling where you pop into neutral and just kind of roll away. And they have a 10 year belt warranty, so I can beat on this and in 10 years, they'll replace my belt if I need to, within 10 years, so. Yeah, I don't feel like I need to hold back at all. I'm just romping on the gas. Yamaha is gunning for the competition, mainly the Polaris General, with this unmatched CVT warranty and durability, but they're also raising the bar in this segment with their class leading numbers. Class leading power at 108 horsepower. Suspension travel and ground clearance are also class leading on the two seater. 14.2 inches of front suspension travel, 16.9 inches of rear suspension travel, and 13.8 inches of ground clearance. The RMAX 4 is also impressive, but not class leading, with 14.2 inches of front travel, 13.3 inches of rear travel, and 14.4 inches of ground clearance. All right, here we go. We got a little bit of a high speed run, so four wheel drive, sport mode, firm on the IQS shocks, let's go. Stability in the four-seater is really good, and honestly, I can't really tell that this is a four-seater. Uh, it feels just like the two-seater. Really impressive suspension, and I really just feel like I can romp on it. I don't need to be that careful. Really fun, really confidence-inspiring. Oh yeah, you know, I'm going 40 miles an hour in the sand. And in the same machine, I can go plow my driveway. I can haul firewood, it's got a dump bed. Way cool. Style-wise, I think Yamaha absolutely killed this machine. It has such an aggressive, angry look to it. Up front, you have these kind of squinty, angry-eyed running lights, uh, headlights below that. I just, I love the grill up here. Uh, you can see the oil cooler through there. Um, kind of a fake uh, hood scoop there, but I don't mind it. I think it looks pretty cool. 
Overall, just a, a really aggressive looking machine. So up front, you do get this worn winch. It comes standard on the XTR and LE models. You also get these two tie down points right here, which is awesome for tying down to a trailer. I don't know why no one thought of that before Yamaha. And uh, Yamaha doesn't want to tell you this, but these are actually the perfect size to fit a shackle. So you could use those as a recovery point if you want to. And uh, I'd have confidence doing that. We've definitely winched on some, uh, some weaker pieces of metal at TFL in the past. Uh, if we come around to the side here, you can see we have these pretty beefy uh, rock rails on the side. I put a nice dash in it today, so glad we had those. They kind of flare out around here. Um, so the idea is you'll hit that before you rip the rear wheel off. On the XTR and LE models, you're gonna get Yamaha's Adventure Pro system, which is basically a tablet up here. Uh, you can control different parameters, so you just hold down and you can select exactly what you want there. So let's say I want intake temp, uh, you can throw that in there. I can change the middle one. Uh, let's say I want to um, display the D mode, I can go in there. Uh, it's got GPS built into it. You can set waypoints, you can share routes with friends, you can take pictures, there's a little camera right here. And this whole thing's removable, so you can just hit a button in the back and the whole thing will unlatch. You can take it with you, uh, bring it inside and keep working on it or just keep it out uh, safe from the elements. It is fully waterproof, you can hose it down and it does lock into place, so uh, you don't need to bring it inside if you don't want to. This only comes standard on the high-end LE model, uh, but you do get a sound system and you do get integrated door speakers, which is really cool. They're right there in the door, just like a car. You can add on additional pods in the rear if you want, and even a subwoofer under the seat. I really like that. And you have the cutouts already marked in the lower end model. So if you wanna add the sound system to the base model or the XTR, you can do that. It's really easy and uh, all the holes are pre-marked and everything, so there's no guesswork involved. Down here is the shifter. You have low, high, neutral, and reverse. There's no park gear. You're just gonna throw it in neutral and uh, use the e-brake. I do like how this is gated though. Polaris doesn't put a gate on theirs. It's just straight up and down. This is uh, way easier to tell what gear you're in without really paying attention to it. There are a ton of blank switch panels that you can uh, just pop out and you can add more rocker switches in there if you so desire. This uh, one I'm sitting in right now already has one of them taken up by the um, IQS shocks and another one taken up by the winch, but you have a ton of them up there. There's even more down here by the shifter and the floor drains use the same rubber piece. So if you happen to lose one of your floor drains, all you do is pop out one from your dash and throw it right in the floor. Just a couple other things while I'm cruising here that I want to talk about. First of all, this cluster. I really like the cluster here. It's backlit in blue as are a lot of the other switches and a lot of the other gear in the interior, but the cluster has a fuel gauge. It tells you what D mode you're in. It tells you what suspension setting you're in. It tells you if your diff is locked. It tells you if you're in four wheel drive. It has all that info. Uh, but the speedometer is huge. That's the main thing on there. So a quick glance down, even while I'm flying through the sand, I can tell exactly how fast I'm going. Also, I know I talked about comfort a little bit, uh, but there are a couple other comfort things I just want to touch on real quick. You do get these nice adjustable seat belts. Um, so you can adjust the height of them in six different positions, whereas the outgoing Wolverine X2 and X4 only had uh, two positions. So these are much more adjustable. You also have this pretty cool uh, rear view mirror right here, so it's easy to see behind you. You can see right between those two back seats. Now, unfortunately, uh, there's not a lot of flat space here at Sand Hollow, so I can't really test out the top speed. You know, I definitely got it going 40 or so uh, around some the turns in the sand, and that felt fast. Uh, but it's definitely not as fast as this machine can go. This thing is capable of just under a 70 mile per hour top speed and uh, there's no way I'm gonna get it that quick out on this terrain. I'm impressed, guys. I have not taken it easy on this machine today, and it just keeps asking for more. It's durable, everything in here is comfortable. It's got all the tech I need. Uh, it's got, you know, four wheel drive, two wheel drive, full diff lock that's selectable. You're not relying on a computer. Plenty of power, more than I need. 
Uh, and it puts a huge smile on my face when I step into it. It's just, you know, very, very responsive. And on top of all of that, you know, I had a, a great day out here in Utah today and uh, I could take this back home to Colorado and uh, really do some work with it, you know? Tow 2,000 pounds, haul 600 pounds. That might make this a really easy sell to some of your wives. Honestly, the most impressive part to me is how similar the four-seater drives to the two-seater. I drove the, the two-seater for about two hours this morning, spent about two hours in this four-seater now, and honestly, unless you look back, it's hard to tell the difference. So as far as colors go, uh, I really, really dig this green color that's on the mid-range XTR. All the XTRs come in this green. It looks way better in person than online. I really fell in love with it once I showed up here to Utah. The blue one, that's the LE. Uh, that's the top of the line model, only comes in blue. And then if you're gonna go for the base model, uh, if you're gonna get the two-seater, it comes in white and gray. And if you want the four-seater, your only option is gray. And uh, as far as availability, they're available right now at your Yamaha dealership. As far as pricing goes, the R-Max lineup starts at $19,799. That's for the base model two-seater. As far as the ones I was driving today, that green XTR, kind of the mid-range one, the two-seater that I was driving, $21,999 MSRP. And the LE R-Max 4, fully loaded, $25,299. Because the wheelbases are so similar between the two machines, I don't think it's going to be a hard decision for people to decide which one they want to buy. They ride kind of the same and if you need the dump bed you're going to go for the two seater. If you want to bring your whole family along you're going to want to go for the four seater. So there you have it guys. There's my full review on the 2021 Yamaha R-Max 2 and R-Max 4 1000. Super impressive machine. I had a great day out here uh, and this was not an easy trail. Yamaha put these machines through some abuse today. They all took it like a champ. Nothing broke. Nothing got stuck, we didn't have to use the winch once. Uh, overall, I'm really impressed. There you have it guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to go back to TFL Off-Road, TFL Truck, TFL Bike for more power sports products over there. And uh, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below and we'll see you in the next one.